Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live on day two in Las Vegas at the Sands Expo Center at Dell Technologies World. I'm Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman and we are welcoming to theCUBE for the first time distinguished engineer and VMAX product group CTO Adnan Sahin. Adnan, it's great to have you on theCUBE. Thank you, great to be here. So big announcements going on at the event this week. Um, talk to us about the modern data center. Saw that press release this morning. What does the modern data center, how does Dell Technologies define it, and how yep. are you seeing and helping customers yep. implement it? Yep. And again, it goes into like when you have an, running an application, you need compute, storage, and network. So that really have to have uh, a, a modern infrastructure to cover all those, those bases. So that's what really, during the keynote we heard today uh, from uh, Jeff Clark on our compute capabilities, new servers, as well as new storage offering from Dell EMC, the PowerMax. Add on PowerMax. Let, let's Correct. start there. So yes. one of the one of the flagship announcements here at the show, building on the VMAX, which of course builds on the Symmetrix Correct. history. Uh, why don't you give us a little overview and then we'll, uh, yep. we'll dig into some questions I have. Uh, so, so yeah, we've been really following the industry trends. So we introduced VMAX All Flash a couple years back. And then we are also looking at the industry trends and what we realized is the industry is transitioning in terms of media interface from SaaS connected drives into NVMe and PCIe connected drives. And the main driver for, for that one is, is twofold. One is reducing the latency. Uh, and with NVMe, you can get much leaner software uh, uh, layers that, that really gives you lower latency. And the other one is the media transition that changes from a NAND based uh, uh, non-volatile memories technology into newer and emerging low latency, ultra low latency uh, technology. So with NVMe, we can get both at the same time. All right, so, so Adnan, you know, we remember back when you know, it was EMC at the time, it came with the flash yep. technologies, everybody's doing flash. Now, yep. anybody in the storage industry, NVMe, NVMe over fabric, Correct. everyone's talking about it. Correct. PowerMax Bob up on stage, Bob Correct. Peterson, yes, though, yes. Would, you know, many, many years yes. uh, working on this, said uh, you know, there's a big difference between just you know, having it and really able to utilize it so, you know, with, without going too deep, explain Correct. to us some architectural things that have to Correct. happen from you know, a hardware and software standpoint Correct. to take advantage Correct. of this transition. Sure, so, so, so VMAX and PowerMAX is really a scale out multi-controller architecture. Therefore, we need to have persistent storage accessible through multiple controllers, at least two. So in order to really be you know, highly resilient and high available to system, we need multi-ported, dual-ported drives available to us. One of the things that we spend quite a lot of time is to really make, that, make sure that dual-ported NVMe drives are ready for our uh, highly demanding enterprise resilient storage system. So we spend a lot of time improving drive quality as well as our software to handle all the NVMe related concerns. So at the event, the theme, Make It Real, yesterday Michael Dell kicked things off and talked about these four transformative elements where customers need to transform to be successful. Digital, IT, security, workforce. Yeah. With what you just talked about and the new enhancements to some of the, the technologies, how is that helping make customers make their digital transformations effective so that they can deliver differentiated products? I know Correct. you just came from a customer Correct. meeting. Maybe give us Correct. an example of what you're seeing Correct. applied out there. So the so imp important thing is the applications, the customers have been using databases, many different variants. There's been some traditional databases and new and emerging databases. Main driver is, of course, availability and resilience, but at the same time, operational simplicity because you know, we have simplified our user interface and overall user experience significantly over years so that you know, with, a few, with fewer people, you, they can manage many, many uh, larger capacities of the systems. Um, and, and then with, with latency is another important aspect of, of application experience. If you lower the latency, either through caching or lower latency media, you give better experience to, to end users. And, and, and that, therefore, they can do more with what they have as the infrastructure. Uh, and are there any specific use cases or verticals where you're finding that, especially the NVMe, uh, offering is going to be most helpful at day one? Um, I mean, I think any traditional application that has, let's say, like journals, uh, available benefit, but, but on top of that, if you're doing, running large queries of random IO access storage, 
they will get lower latency out of NVMe-based systems. They could be real-time analytics, for example. You can get ultra-low latency from, from the back end. Uh, and also, if you're using uh, some of the database, uh, data warehouse type of applications, you can get massive bandwidth out of uh, VMAX and PowerMax systems that helps you process more in shorter time. Yes, yeah, so analytics as a use case attached to the storage is of course a Correct. really interesting Correct. one, heavily growing. One of the other interesting things about PowerMax is, I think it was discussed, it's predictive analytics Correct. inside. Correct. So, you know, I, I think back to, I mean, just disclosure, I worked at EMC yeah. for 10 years. Yes. We think of intelligent storage was something we've been talking about yeah. for a long time. Explain what's different about this generation of Correct. analytics and predictive compared to previous storage sure, innovations. Sure. So we have the, the infrastructure to keep track of workloads at very fine address granularity. So we keep track of um, access types and access sizes in, in as small as five megabytes a piece. So in a larger system that could be 40 million data sets for a 200 terabyte system, and, and once we have that data, we can analyze and we have some linear regression um, uh, time series analysis that we can predict whether an active address space will remain active or whether a cold address space will remain cold. And based on that, we can make decisions. Previously, we were able to make use of those decisions for tiering between hard drives and, and flash drives. More recently, we are using it for uh, data reduction technologies, for compression, for example, or deduplication. If data set is highly active, we don't necessarily compress them because they will be updated fre frequently, therefore the, the CPU's uh, use will, be, uh, will not be uh, effective. So, and then taking to the next level is when storage class memory becomes available, we will be able to use the media based on their strengths. So if, the, if for storage class memory, low latency, we can place read heavy and write heavy workloads into storage class memory. So giving customers presumably the ability to take data, use it as a catalyst in many different lines of the business to combine it, recombine it, and be able to use the analytics that are built in, it sounds like, to not just get insights they can take ac action on, but actually act on them. Correct. Give us an example of a customer that's maybe doing that to be able to deliver a differentiated product to, or service to their customers. Correct. So, one of the important features that we are introducing that's available both in PowerMax and VMAX systems is service levels. So that's very relevant to most or all of our customers because, for example, if you are a service provider, customer service provider, even though all the data resides on very fast NAND flash media, they can still provide differentiated performance to their own tenants. For example, if a tenant is paying you know, uh, a, a certain amount, they may get silver or bronze service level. They may not see the full benefit of flash at that service level, but when they upsell, upsold into a higher performance level or service level with a, uh, with, with, with a simple change in, in Unisphere, for example, they can get flash response time right away. So it basically changes and simplifies their business models and makes it more predictable for them. Uh, another one is also the prioritization. They can also set priorities for applications. As long as a uh, uh, high priority service level gets it is uh, a response time, expected target response time, everybody will get enjoy low response time. But if, we, if the high priority uh, uh, group or application does not meet its targets, then we start to increase response time of lower priority applications to give more resources for high priority applications. So that's really a way that customers can capitalize this, this feature. All right, and I wonder if you can give us a little bit, dig into NVMe, NVMe over Fabric, and you talked about storage class memory, specifically looking at availability, maturity, and you know, what, what's kind of the pricing considerations for these that we could expect yep. kind of today and through the next kind of six, yep. 12 months? Yeah, so, so NVMe as, as like the, the interface that drives themselves uh, um, at this, this date, they may be at a premium compared to SaaS, but the expectation when we talk to industry leaders and, and vendors, there will be crossover expected very soon. So, after, so that's just really the, the positioning that we just want to be in this, this market, get a product out, and then really be ready for when, when that crossover happens. Um, in terms of storage class memory, again, it comes at a premium. 
uh, but then we using our intelligence, if you can direct most of the IOs to this you know, premium storage media, then we, we can let customers enjoy the benefits of, of that extra premium that they would endure, endure, they would have to pay. But over time, just if you remember early days of Flash, when the first Flash came out, it was very expensive at the time, but over time, it became more and more prevalent. So what our expectation is storage class type of, of memory over time will, will follow a similar path, and it will become very uh, possible in the near future that we will see all storage class memory systems coming out of vendors. All right, and how about the NVMe over fabric? NVMe over fabrics, we are looking, de definitely we have plans uh, for NVMe over fabrics. Of course, standards are still evolving, and it are also for enterprise customers, there's concerns around multi-pathing support and, and maturity of that. We are working with standards, standards bodies and other vendors on, on improving that, that aspect. Okay, so th there, there's one thing about this transition that's a little different than most. It has an impact on the application. So where yeah. is Dell getting involved or how are you working with your customers? So you talked about getting ready for that storage class memory. Yeah. You know, this is not just, we've been using SCSI for a long time. Uh, so you know, how do we get ready as an industry? What, what's Dell's positioning in, in that discussion of applications? Yeah. I mean, the Dell teams various across the board are participating in standards bodies and, and with the industry uh, thought leaders on really getting to, uh, to common standards-based solutions. I think that's, that's one, one direction that, that we're going, going after with this. A anything on the application side, though? Is, uh, that, is that more on the pivotal Application VMware side, side of course, VMware, yeah. we have very you know, uh, deep discussions with VMware on NVMware or fabrics and how we can handle, uh, you know, work with them uh, more eff efficiently. So Adnan, when we kicked off this segment, we talked about it being the, the first Dell Technologies world an indicator of the absorption of the EMC Federation. We are over your shoulders, the, the Dell EMC Partner Program. What are some of the feedback that you're hearing from partners, technology partners um, who are collaborating? You mentioned VMware. What's some of the feedback that you're hearing at the event in terms of what you've announced and, and how do your partners help influence the design of yeah. these leading technologies? I mean, there's great excitement. I mean, we've been you know, uh, working with them, listening to them, learning uh, from them, uh, and, and I think overall, everybody is excited with, with the new, new product, and, and we are also, as a group, very excited with, with NVMe. We've been working for, for a while, and, and we are happy to, to be able to, to release the product today. All right, uh, Adnan, one, one of the other product lines that, that there were a bunch of announcements around was around the Extreme IO and the right. X2. Can you just help us make sure we understand positioning today of uh, things like VMAX and PowerMax and the Extreme IO family? Yep, I mean, each product uh, platform has strengths uh, and if customers are happy with what they were, they're using, they should continue with the same, same product line. I think that really makes it easier for, for, for everyone. Um, and Extreme IO, I believe they announced uh, re uh, remote replication as well, so it's, 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 it's great. From a foundational perspective, what are these technologies going to be able to do to enable enterprises to start taking advantage and realizing the possibilities of emerging technologies like machine learning, artificial yeah. intelligence, IoT? Yeah, I mean, I think important part is, if you look at all those things, what is really needed is ultra low latency, high bandwidth capabilities from storage because you have massive compute capability. Sometimes customers use in-memory applications as well and we need to be close to compute, as close as possible to, 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 to the memory. It's not always possible, but we want to get to be there. We have significant value add to be, to be clear. For example, we have local and remote replication capabilities. If you're running any of those applications in a mission critical environment, you want to make sure that you have local replication capability as well as remote replication, disaster recovery, business continuous models uh, built around it. And what we have with our infrastructure is to really give customers that type of mission critical. If you cannot take any outage in this, in this day and age with, with the applications. Yeah, Adnan, I got to talk to Jeff Clark earlier today on theCUBE, and he talked about the engineering culture. So right. from the EMC side, I'm, I'm curious if you know, working with your, the, 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 now the Dell team, you've got that whole server team. Has that changed some of the processes there? How, how does that, you know, impact yeah. the, yeah. both the development and the viewpoint of, from the engineering yeah. team? There's, there's much, very clear, much better communication. Uh, we've been, you know, talking to the server team very, very easily and very frequently actually just to make sure that, for example, we understand their challenges and then the type of solutions they come up with on the server side and how we can apply on our storage. And the same from our side, 
we give feedback on our experiences on, on, on the storage to, to them. And not only with, with the server side, but also across different portfolio components in our storage uh, business unit as well. So last question, customers that are here, maybe in the early stages of transformation and are looking for best practices, where do we start? Do we start with transforming IT to make it into a profit center? What are your recommendations? Uh, can you repeat, I couldn't hear the last one, the IT. Yeah, what yeah. are your recommendations for, for customers that might be uh, at the very beginning of their transformation yeah. journey? What do you recommend, where do they start in terms of going, hey, we, we've got our business leaders recognize IT should become a part of our business strategy. It shouldn't be a cost center, it should be a profit center. How do you recommend they start these conversations with Dell EMC, Dell Technologies to yeah, get. They just need to talk to their representative about business need and application needs, right? So, you know, we have a large portfolio of products available to our customers. And, you know, um, again, on the, on the high end with, with resilient storage, with remote replication capabilities, that might be VMAX. On, on, on the, on the mid-range, it could be either Unity or, or storage uh, center. And, and on the server side, again, similar types of, of uh, options available. They just need to talk about you know, their application needs, virtualization needs, storage needs, hyper-converged versus you know, traditional block storage versus file storage connectivity. Those make all the difference, and I think our um, uh, field people have experience in really helping customers out. Well, Adam, thanks so much for stopping by and thank sharing you. with us what's new with the technologies. We appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. Thanks. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman. We are here live at day two of Dell Technologies World from Vegas. Stick around, we'll be right back after a short break.